Hi, it's Bimerzen, and in this video I will explain the oil filter housing on the BMW's N42 and N46 engines. I'll explain how the oil flows from the oil pump to the oil filter housing and how it flows through the oil cooler and through the filter element and what happens if you get the breeze sucked into the oil filter housing and into the engine. I will also talk about common oil leaks and how to fix them and a clever bit of engineering that makes sure that unfiltered oil drains back into the oil sump when you're doing your oil changes. As you can see, I have BMW's N42 engine here on my engine stand, so this is a perfect time to show you guys some details on how the oil flows through the engine. I get a lot of questions about that, so I think that we will be able to resolve them. This will of course also work for the N46 engine. So let's first go through the layout. So this is the actual oil filter housing here that is bolted onto the engine block. And here on the side, you can see the oil cooler. And if I uh, unscrew this oil filter element cap, you can see the filter itself. So the oil pump pumps oil from the bottom of the oil pan and into the oil filter housing. The oil pressure regulator valve is located in the oil pump housing and can only be accessed by removing the oil sump, which is a really <laughs> pain in the ass kind of a job. And then the oil comes out here and it enters this hole here on the housing. And here you can see the check valve. So the oil pressure has to overcome this spring and then it can open and the oil can flow. So this check valve is uh, here so that the oil doesn't drain back into the engine. So the next time when you start the engine, all the components are already primed and full of oil. And uh, this way the engine stays healthy for longer and it doesn't rattle. So this is uh, very important. So then the oil comes through this hole here and enters the oil cooler here. It cools the oil and then it exits here and goes back into the chamber where the filter element is located. As you can see, the check valve is uh, integrated into the housing, so it's a non-replaceable item. So you have to replace the whole assembly if you have a bad check valve. However, you are able to inspect it and clean it if uh, you suspect that there's something wrong with it. Then the oil gets filtered through the filter element and it exits in the center and it continues through the center hole into the engine itself. So this is where this uh, exit path or oil channel is located and this is where the oil continues into the oil galleries and uh, lubricates the engine. There is a smart trick to drain the unfiltered oil back into the oil pan. There are two small o-rings on the tip of the oil filter cover. So when the filter cover is uh, unscrewed, the whole cover raises and opens a path so the lower O-ring still seals on the housing, but the upper ring opens up and that enables the unfiltered oil to drain from the filter element chamber through the passage back to the engine block and down to the oil pan. So it's important to unscrew the cap for a couple of millimeters and let the unfiltered oil drain back into the engine. I suggest you do this first and then raise the car and uh, drain the oil from underneath and this should be enough time for all the oil to drain off. So this is also why it's so important to replace all the o-rings on the filter element. So you usually get them uh, together with the oil filter element and you definitely should replace all three o-rings. 
Here you can see the oil channel that opens up when you unscrew the cap. So the oil drains through this chamber here and this chamber connects to this uh, exit port and it drains back into the engine block and into the oil sump. So what happens if you get debris inside the oil filter housing? So if the oil pump sucks debris past the oil pickup mesh screen, the debris then passes through the oil pump where it usually gets even more grinded and that gets into the oil pressure regulator valve and up into the oil filter housing. So it then passes the check valve right here and uh, enters the oil cooler. So it goes uh, through this port here and uh, ends up back in the oil filter element chamber here. And then it gets filtered out. If you see the debris in the filter element chamber and or in oil cooler and uh, drain passage, then you have a problem. If uh, you see debris in the oil intake passage and then you have a really, really big problem. So if you see debris here in this area, then uh, it basically already entered the engine and you will have to do a complete teardown and inspection and replace some parts on the whole engine. So this usually isn't a viable option. So you will probably have to replace the whole engine. But uh, if you only get debris in this area and maybe here in the drain area, then uh, maybe it's still not too late. So what you have to do, you have to, of course, take everything apart and clean everything. And uh, while you remove the oil filter housing, you have to be extra careful not to introduce any debris here in this oil channel here, because this goes straight into the engine unfiltered. So this is the behind the filter already. And then you have to clean out the oil cooler or even better if you replace it all together, just to be 100% sure. And then of course you have to drop the oil pan and inspect the oil pickup tube and the mesh. And uh, this is where you will probably find some more pieces. You have to clean that out. And it's also a very good idea to inspect the pressure regulator valve. Uh, as I said, it is located underneath. So uh, you should replace it if you see any damage there. So what happens usually? The plastic chain rail guide breaks into small pieces and then those pieces get uh, sucked into the oil pump and they emerge through this hole and into the oil filter housing. So Plastic parts are usually sign of a broken chain rail guide. Another option is uh, you often can see pieces of old RTV or uh, silicone because people usually use too much silicone on the valve cover replacement job and that silicone then drops off into the oil pan and then it gets uh, into the oil pump and into the oil filter housing. So it's a never a good idea to use too much of that stuff. Also, I've seen uh, some people just uh, using silicone on this gasket here, which is a no-no. Don't do that because uh, pieces of silicone in this chamber here can get into the engine and uh, that can cause all sorts of issues. So uh, yeah, a word of caution on the use of silicone. But uh, otherwise, uh, if you catch it soon enough, uh, then the engine can be saved, I think. There is also a small bypass hole here on the filter housing. So this is right behind the check valve here. And uh, this means that there is always some oil flow going through the chamber and into the engine. So even if your oil cooler is uh, stuck with something, there is uh, still some oil flow going on. Now let's talk about the oil leaks. Uh, very common oil leak is this gasket right here. So this is between the engine block and the uh, oil filter housing. This is a very, very cheap, I think about four euro gasket, but it takes some time to replace, but it's an easy job. So you can do it yourself. Just be careful not to introduce any dirt here. So usually what you will see is oil here in this hole here 
and that oil usually drips down here on this edge and down to the bottom of the engine on the front side. So if you take a look here, you should be able to see it. So this is very common. Another less common oil leak is here between the oil cooler and the filter housing. And it's another very cheap small gasket. Again, you just have to undo a couple of bolts and replace the gasket. As I said, never use RTV on this uh, because pieces of silicone can get into the engine unfiltered. So uh, it's not a good idea. Okay, so this is the end of the video. I hope that uh, you have learned something new and useful. Thanks for watching, uh, like the video and consider subscribing if you have a BMW with N42 or N46 engine or even M54 engine because uh, I also have a Z4. So uh, check out my other videos on the E46 and E85 BMWs. Uh, maybe you'll find something useful. Keep Zen and continue the art of BMW maintenance. Thank you.